How's it going guys? I'm Theojo, and I bet when you read the title you were a bit skeptical. I mean completely understandable when there are so many jerks out there just making bogus tutorials on how to increase your internet speed. Unbelievable. Well, today we're going to see about what can actually be done to potentially increase your internet speed. Of course, there are some major caveats here. First of all, quite obviously, you can never get a faster internet speed than what you pay for from your internet provider. There are no exceptions to this. We're not doing any magic here, okay? So this video is simply going to be for those of you who know you should be having a faster internet speed but aren't. Because in that case, there is a problem, obviously, but we can go and fix problems. But again, if you're expecting to get a faster max connection speed without paying for it, I recommend you go and get your head checked. Now, the very first step is we need to figure out if there is even a problem in the first place. Are you getting the internet speed you're paying for? Hopefully you already know what you should be getting. So what you can do is just go on speedtest.net and run a test, or better yet, try a speed test directly on your ISP's website. Because sometimes the servers on speedtest.net are slower than they should be, and it's not gonna be very accurate. Or at the very least, try multiple servers. And if your speed test matches what you should be getting, congratulations, you're done, and there's nothing else that you can do. If the speed test shows something slower than expected, we need to move on to the next step, which is to figure out where the problem is. Is it your computer? Is it the connection between the computer and the router? Is it the router? Is it the ISP itself? So here are a few things you need to do next to figure all this out. First, try a speed test at different times of day, because sometimes ISPs can become slower at peak hours because of congestion. If this is the problem, there's not really much you can do except call them up and complain and hope they do something to fix it. Next, you want to do a speed test on multiple devices, including other computers or your phone. If one device gets the correct speed and the others are slower, then we can safely assume that the problem is with one of those devices or all of them, or how they're connected to the router. And if all the devices are slower than expected, we can assume it's probably not those devices themselves, it's something else. Next, if you are connected wirelessly to your router, then you want to connect via hardwire and run the test again. We don't want to introduce too many factors. If your connection goes through a switch, you also want to connect a wire directly to the router with a laptop if you have to, if your computer is too far away, and try different cables as well. It's all about figuring out what things change what so we can move on and isolate it. And as a side note, if you notice that your speed is limited to a nice round number, like 100 megabits or something like that, and it's the same every time, it's most likely that there is something restricting the speed in your network. For example, it could be that you have an ethernet port or a switch in your network that doesn't do gigabit and is limited to 100 megabits. Now, I hope I don't have to go into too much detail what these different tests are for that I mentioned. Obviously, if the same computer tests faster with hardwire than wireless, then the problem is with the wireless connection, for example. But if you can't get your speed test to improve no matter what, whether it's wired or wireless, on all your devices, at different times a day, and you're sure that no one else is hogging your bandwidth, then there are probably two possibilities. It's either the router or the connection to your ISP. Let's narrow it down a bit further. If the problem doesn't seem to be wireless, meaning you're using a hardwire connection, first check the type of ethernet cable you have. It will say right on the cable itself. If it says Cat5e or any type of Cat6, that's fine. And if it says Cat5, not Cat5e, you might want to just throw that cable in the garbage because you're using a 15-year-old cable, something like that, and that could be your problem. Cat5 is really only rated for 100 megabits. Even though it can technically do faster, you're not guaranteed to get it. So at least use Cat5e if you can. If the problem does seem to be wireless, meaning that only wireless devices are slower than usual, there are a lot of things we can try. First, most simply, move the device right next to the router for maximum signal strength when you do the test. If the speed improves to what it should, then obviously you have a weak signal. In that case, if you have a dual band router, try connecting to it on the 5 GHz connection to avoid interference. Otherwise, to deal with this, you can also try going into the router settings, usually by typing in 192.168.1.1 into your browser. It might be different, you'll have to look it up. 
and then adjust the Wi-Fi channel. That'll be in the Wi-Fi settings in there. If it's not set to automatic, then set it to that. And if it is set to automatic, you're probably screwed. You'd really have two options. I mean, buy a better router or buy an extender or move the router to a better location. A weak signal is a physical problem and there really aren't any settings you can change to fix it. If you get an extender though, I highly recommend you get a wired extender. So you run a physical wire to the extender from the router and then it creates a new access point. Otherwise, it's just gonna be repeating the weak signal and it might be better, but it's not gonna do much. Okay, but what if your wireless speed doesn't change when you get closer? Well, that means that it's not the signal strength, of course, which might be good news. It's probably router configuration, which we most likely can fix. I would try going into the router settings and look for prioritization options. And this will be called many things by different manufacturers. It could be called QOS for quality of service. It might be called media prioritization or something like that. Anyway, you go to those settings and there should be a way to set your device to higher prioritization so it will get first dibs on the connection over other devices in your network. Or at least the router will try to dedicate more resources to it. And this is especially helpful if you have family or roommates who tend to hog the internet. You can kind of go in and give yourself an advantage. And this could also work even if you're on wired. If that doesn't work, however, again, I would just try messing around with other settings in the router or just get a new router. However, I will say that unless you have a very high internet speed connection, like hundreds of megabits, or you have a very old router, the router itself is probably not the problem. It could be, but probably not. It's more likely the connection to your ISP and you'll have to call them up. All right, next. What if we've determined that the problem isn't the wireless connection and it's not the physical connection to your computer, it's not the router itself because other devices have fine speed? Well, it doesn't take a rocket surgeon to realize that the problem is probably with that specific computer. The first thing you wanna try is a different web browser. If you're not already using Google Chrome, try that. It's usually pretty fast. And if you are using Chrome, try the default browser on your computer like Microsoft Edge or even Internet Explorer. And if it turns out it is the browser, make sure you keep it up to date and try removing unnecessary extensions or just reinstall it all together. If changing browsers doesn't make a difference on the computer, make sure you try to remove as many background processes on that computer as possible either by looking in the taskbar for programs that are running or the task manager or closing everything you can. And even better, you can boot up the computer into safe mode, which will only launch programs absolutely essential to the operating system. That way you can tell, all right, it's probably a program running interfering with things. If doing one of those things fixes it, then yeah, something is hogging system resources most likely. It really shouldn't be that difficult to figure out which one by using a built-in Windows feature called Resource Monitor. You can just type that into the Start menu, it should come up. And this will have different tabs for what programs are currently using the most bandwidth, CPU, hard drive activity, and RAM, and other resources. In the Network tab, for example, you can sort by total network activity to see what processes are hogging all the bandwidth, if any, and look on the graph to see how much total is being used also. So you can also check other tabs to see if any processes are using like a large amount of resources as well for CPU or disk space or anything like that. Then you can get an idea of which programs you wanna to try to close first to see if that has any difference on internet speed. Now, if none of these things work, but you're sure it's just that computer, there are a couple possibilities. First, the computer might just be really old and low power. It may also have a slow network card, which you can check by going to the list of adapters in the control panel, selecting one, and clicking status. It should tell you the maximum capable speed of the interface. If it says gigabit, it's probably not that. If it says 100 megabit, that might be it. As a last resort, you can also try hooking up a laptop or another device up to the same ethernet cable going into your computer, just swap it out, and that will rule out anything else in the network. It could be something a little bit further down the line or the cable itself, and this way you can say, all right, it's definitely just the computer. Finally, let's address a problem where maybe the internet connection speed looks fine, but the internet still feels very slow in general. Websites take a while to load, you know, maybe you have to refresh pages to get them to load, that sort of thing. Again, I'd first try another browser without any browser extensions and closing background processes. 
one of the possible causes is low system resources. Another thing you can try is to change the DNS server you're using. And whoa, that may sound complicated, but it's really not. You see, the DNS server is basically like a phone book. So when you type in a website name into the browser, your computer needs to find out what the actual IP address of the site is in order to connect. So the DNS server is a way for the computer to look up the direct address it needs to go to based on the website name. Typically, if you don't change anything, you're just using the DNS server from your internet service provider. But sometimes these are pretty slow, and this makes it seem like your internet is slow because websites won't load, but really you're just waiting on the DNS server to respond. However, you don't have to use your ISP's DNS server. You can use any other public one available. And one good one I would recommend that you can use is actually from Google. And they have their own set of public DNS servers on their site that you can use, which are the following IPs, 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4. Great, so what the heck do I do with that? Well, in Windows, this is what you do to change it. You go to the control panel, then network and sharing center, and then change adapter settings. Or in Windows 10, go to settings, network, status, change adapter options. Both of these ways will bring you to the same window. Then you wanna right click on the connection you're using and you'll just have to figure out which one that is. Use some critical thinking, guys. And then you go to the properties, click on where it says Internet Protocol Version 4, then hit the Properties button again, and look to where it says Use the following DNS server addresses. This is where you can put in your own. In our case, the ones I just mentioned, 8888, 8844 for Google's. And then you can just check the box to validate settings on exit, so it double checks it, and it should work. Hopefully by doing this, you'll notice that web pages load faster. If you notice any issues, you can always go back and change it to use the automatic DNS again. And if you don't notice any change at all, well, I guess that wasn't the issue. All right, so I think I've covered basically all the common things to try if your internet isn't as fast as you think it should be. At the very least, you'll have a better idea of the possible causes so you can do your own processes of elimination to narrow it down and figure it out yourself. Anyway, that's it. So let me know what you guys think, and if this helped at all, I'd be interested to hear that. And if you want to keep watching, here are some other videos you can check out. Just click those. And if you want to subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Should be worth it. And also consider enabling notifications as well. Anyway, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.